This video was brought to you by the good people at Skillshare. We shall talk more about them in a bit. So by far the most popular video I have ever made was one about weird national anthem facts. And in the year since I posted it, you guys have done nothing but bring even more weird national anthem facts to my attention. So here are a few more for you. So to start, there seems to be a popular rumor that the national anthem of Iceland is about a crying flower. And while that might be technically true, it is also taking things perhaps a little little bit literally. So the Icelandic national anthem is actually quite a preachy song. It was written by a Lutheran minister in the 19th century and is based on Psalm 90 which is a prayer from Moses to God. And like most Old Testament prayers, it is written in this very grandiose poetic language. And so one line in the anthem says something along the lines of, an eternal flower that trembles with tears, worships God, then dies. But I mean, this is obviously some sort of metaphor for like man's smallness before the Lord. It is not literally about a crying flower any more than the Canadian national anthem is literally about people's hearts glowing. But anyway, if you think it's a bad analogy, bring it up with the Reverend Mathisis Jokumusen, because the flower part was not actually found in the original Psalm 90 itself. In the last video, we talked a lot about the various copycat national anthems of the world, like how the Finnish national anthem and the Estonian national anthem are basically the same, or how a lot of national anthems in Africa all use the same music. But the practice of national anthems ripping off some shared piece of music is actually an even more widespread phenomenon than that. Take the Yugoslavian national anthem, for instance. It is quite obviously just a copycat of the Polish one. But of course that is less relevant these days because there is no Yugoslavia anymore. Congratulations, Poland. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with the William Tell Overture. Even if you don't know the name, I'm sure you'll recognize it when you hear it. It is a piece of music that is often used in cartoons. But anyway, it has this very distinctive beginning part, which, as you can hear, was pretty brazenly ripped off by the national anthem of El Salvador. weird story is the old national anthem of Zimbabwe. So prior to 1980, Zimbabwe was known as Rhodesia, and it had an undemocratic government run by its white minority population, much like South Africa. And the national anthem of that regime was a song called Voices of Rhodesia that just ripped off the music to Beethoven's Ode to Joy. But as any Europeans watching this will know, the idea of using Ode to Joy as a national anthem was one that was already taken by the European Union some years earlier. When Rhodesia abandoned white rule and became Zimbabwe in 1980, they got a new national anthem. But this left a legacy in which a lot of black Zimbabweans really dislike the music to Ode to Joy because they associate it with their old racist government. And this has apparently caused some tension for Zimbabwe-EU relations. I assume it means that bright eyes are not that popular in Zimbabwe either. The sun came up with no conclusions, flowers sleeping in their beds, the city summer. Terry's humming, I'm wide awake, it's morning. 
Most national anthems are pretty short, so long as you only sing one verse, which is what most normal people do. Different story in Uruguay, however. Even if you only sing one verse and the chorus, it is so meandering, it still takes over five minutes to get through. In other words, if I had started playing Uruguay's national anthem at the beginning of this video, it would still be playing now. They have to play a special condensed version at soccer games, just so it doesn't waste everyone's time. Now, a lot of national anthems were written a very long time ago, which means that their lyrics often contain references to very out-of-date things that can sometimes be a little bit cringy, but perhaps nothing is more awkward than a national anthem that describes a country's enemies or even friends, since those obviously tend to change a lot over the centuries. The extended verses of the Italian national anthem, for instance, are quite insulting to Austria, because Austria used to be Italy's arch nemesis back when the Italian national anthem was written in 1847. So in the last verse, there is a part that makes rather unflattering reference to Austria's oppression of its neighbors. It goes something along the lines of, the eagle of Austria is losing its feathers. With Russia, it has drunk the blood of Italians and Poles, but burned its heart. Speaking of Poland, their anthem, which was written in 1797, returns the favor by making favorable reference to Italy. However, it also makes flattering reference to Napoleon and a Polish general named Sarniki, who is somewhat obscure today, and probably just as well considering he was best known for organizing a massacre of Polish Jews during Poland's 17th century war with Sweden, as referenced in the anthem's line about making war on the Swede. So yeah, that hasn't aged well. The extended national anthem of Hungary, meanwhile, makes unflattering reference to Turkey, their historic enemy. It refers to the country as a nation of barbarians. The Turkish national anthem, for its part, doesn't much care for Western countries acting all superior. It contains this charming line in reference to the Western world. Is this battered, single-toothed monster what you call civilization? More recently, we have the Algerian national anthem, which was written in 1956. It was written back when Algeria was still a colony, and as a result, contains a few unkind lines about their former colonial master, France. But, I mean, maybe that makes sense given it was written by an Algerian independence activist who was in a French prison at the time. And as Algerian legend goes, the French were so brutal they wouldn't give him any papers or pencils, so he had to write the anthem in his own blood on the walls. Other anthems do not have quite such dramatic origin stories. Take China, for instance. Their anthem has a very modern backstory. It was taken from the soundtrack of a movie, specifically a 1935 film called Children of Troubled Times. China didn't have a lot of good patriotic songs back then, and this one was reasonably popular, so the communist government was like, why not? One interesting thing about national anthems is that even though their lyrics are often manipulated for political reasons, it is quite rare for a dictator to make a national anthem about himself. You might think it would be common for dictators to change the lyrics of a national anthem to include lines like, oh, president so-and-so, how we love you. But for some reason that never really happens. Unless, of course, the dictator is a king. When countries are monarchies, it is not uncommon for the national anthem to just be a long song of praise for who's ever sitting on the throne at that moment. For example, the Jordanian national anthem, long live the king, or the Qatari national anthem, peace be upon the emir or the national anthem of Oman, which is literally called just the Sultan's Anthem, just so everyone knows their place. Some democracies do this as well, <coughs> Britain, but it is always a little bit awkward. In Japan, for instance, their very short and very unique national anthem is very obviously about their emperor. Thousands of years of happy reign be thine, rule on my lord until what are now pebbles, with age shall grow to mighty rocks, whose venerable sides the moth doth line. But controversy about this fact was the reason why the National Anthem of Japan did not get any official status until 1999. Japan has, of course, historically had some trouble with emperor worship. But in 1999, the Japanese government got around this dilemma by declaring that the anthem's lyrics were just vague patriotic symbolism that weren't supposed to mean anything in particular. I mean, lots of things have reigns, right? It doesn't have to be emperors. I don't know why they didn't try writing just a new national anthem with a little bit less historic baggage but you know, maybe they didn't have the skills. But you know who is full of skills? Today's video sponsor, Skillshare. 
Now, I know I don't do sponsored videos very often, but this is one that I feel really good about because Skillshare is actually a website that I have been using myself for a while. It is a place that offers thousands of high quality, very specialized videos that teach you how to master a whole range of specific skills. So for example, people used to always tell me that I should learn how to draw with Adobe Illustrator because it seemed like it was very well suited to my artistic style. But I put it off for a long time because learning a new art software program seemed really intimidating and I didn't know where to start. But then then one day on a lark I signed up for Skillshare and they had this really good tutorial for Illustrator for absolute beginners and I learned a ton and now I'm confidently cranking out Illustrator stuff all the time but it's not just art stuff they have videos on a vast array of topics everything from coding to time management to creative writing to meditation but you don't need to take my word for it because the Skillshare people are giving two free months of the service to the first 500 people who sign up using the link in the description below and even after the 60 days it is only $10 a month, which is still a pretty good deal. So yes, thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like and subscribe, and be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any more weird national anthem facts that I might have missed. We shall now close with the national anthem of Somaliland, which although not technically coming from a real country, is still very much beloved because a lot of people think it sounds like it comes from a Super Nintendo game. See ya next week.